Hello. In this lesson we're going to take a look at how to work out a velocity from a displacement time graph. And to do this we need a little bit of mathematics. We'll be using gradients. So I'll spend a moment reminding you how to work out a gradient. Then we can move on to work out the velocity from the gradient of a displacement time graph. There'll be a few simple exercises as we work through. You might be able to do them in your head, but you might prefer to have a pen and paper to hand. So if you want a pen and paper, now is a good time to pause. Let's start with a very simple example from maths, how to work out a gradient. Here's an XY graph, straight line graph, the yellow line. The gradient of the yellow line is how steep it is. To work out the gradient, we draw a triangle, right angle triangle, with the sides parallel to the axes. We call the part of the triangle parallel to the y-axis the rise. And it's showing us a change in the y-value. At the beginning of the line, working left to right, at the beginning the y-value is minus 20 and at the end it's 16. So the change is delta y. The bottom of the triangle is called the run. It's telling us a change in the x value. We start off at the beginning of the yellow line, x is 0, and at the end of the line, x is 10. So it's telling us a change in the x value. And the gradient is simply the rise divided by the run, or delta y over delta x. And your first exercise is to work out the value of the gradient. So pause the video and try that for yourself. Well, I hope you did that and got 3.6. Let's go over it quickly. How big is the rise? Well, if we start at minus 20, we've got to go up 20 and 16, a total of 36 to get to the end of the line. So the rise is 36. And the run is from time 0 to time, uh, sorry, from position 0 to position 10. It's 10. It's 36 over 10, 3.6. We could have drawn a smaller triangle, We've got, we would have got exactly the same ratio, but if we are doing this in practice, in other words on a piece of graph paper say, it's best to use the biggest triangle you can because it gives more accurate results. Here's another one for you to try. Instead of y and x, let's use s, which stands for displacement, and s is in meters and time in seconds. And this is a graph of some objects displacement against time. Don't worry about it too much. The exercise here is to find the gradient of the middle section, the long yellow line. So how big is the gradient? There's your rise and run triangle. Pause to try this for yourself. How big is the gradient? Let's go through it briefly. Gradient is rise over run. We should now call the quantities delta s and delta t. We're not talking about y and x, we're talking about s and t, delta s and delta t. The rise, well actually it's a fall in value. We started off at 20 and we finish off at minus 25. So we've become 45 meters more negative. That means the rise is minus 45. And the time is from 1 to 10, it's 10, it's 10 minus 1, which is 9 seconds. And that gives an answer of minus 5 meters per second for the gradient. The gradient's got units because S and T have units. And it's negative. And you can see it's negative straight away because it's a downhill line. If the line goes downhill as you go from left to right, that means it's a negative gradient. Now let's think, think about an actual situation of moving an object. Here's a, an, an axis, I've marked it with a scale in meters. I'm going to put a, an object at minus 4 meters. That's its displacement with, re, with respect to the origin. It's at minus 4 meters. I'm going to displace it. I'm going to move it to 3 meters. So it's got a displacement shown by this purple arrow. Let's, show, let's suppose it takes 20 seconds to move the object at a steady speed 
from s is minus 4, that's a left position, to s is plus 3, that's a right position. It takes 20 seconds to do that, moving it at a steady speed. And here's another exercise for you. Can you sketch the objects, which should have an apostrophe, the objects displacement time graph? What would it look like? Pause to try that for yourself. And I hope you've done something like this. Label the axes, put the values in. It starts off at minus 4 when time is 0. And after 20 seconds, it's finished at s equals 3. And if it's a steady speed, it's a straight line. OK, hope that makes sense. Now, can we work out the object's speed and velocity? Pause the video and see if you can work out the speed and velocity. Well, I hope you've done that. The speed is straightforward. The distance moved, you can see, easily is 7 metres. The time it took was 20 seconds, so the speed is 7 over 20, 0.35 metres per second. The velocity is very similar. The displacement was plus 7 metres. We've gone from minus 4 to 3, so we've added 7 metres on. And the velocity is therefore displacement over time, which is plus 0.35 metres per second. It looks the same as the speed. But in fact, you've got more information. If it's a velocity, because it's positive, you know it's moved in the positive direction. If you only were given the speed, you couldn't tell which way it's moved. But they have the same magnitude, 0.35 metres per second. You'll notice something very interesting, I hope, and that is the gradient of this graph let's draw in our triangle, the gradient, the rise over the run, will be 7 plus 7 over 20. And that's the same as our velocity. The gradient of the triangle is the velocity. And that is a key point for you to remember. The gradient of a displacement time graph gives the velocity. Very important point. Here's one more exercise for you. There's a displacement time graph. Can you work out the gradient of that line, the yellow line? Pause now to work out the gradient. Draw in your rise run triangle. I hope you see that the gradient is minus 2 over 20. You know it's negative, it's a downhill thing. So the gradient, well, the, the rise is the displacement from minus 2 to minus 4. It's a negative displacement, that's what's making it go downhill. So it's minus 2 over 20, which is minus 0 0.1 meters per second. It's got a unit. And we know the gradient gives us a velocity. We've just said that. So we can say that the velocity is minus 0 0.1 meters per second. We've worked out the velocity from the displacement time graph. It's worth noting that you can tell what's going on by looking at a displacement time graph. If it's steep, uphill or downhill, it means the object is moving relatively fast. That means a large displacement in a small time. If the line is shallow, like these, up or downhill, it means the velocity is slower. It's not changing displacement very much in a long time. Of course, if the line is flat, it means there is no displacement as time goes on. It means zero velocity. Sometimes we don't have a straight displacement time graph. We have a curved one. In that case, the velocity is changing from moment to moment. hope you can look at the graph and realize that at the beginning of the graph, it's steep. That means the object has a large positive velocity. At the other side of the grass, it, gla graph, it is downhill. It's got a large negative velocity. It's completely reverse directions. And the velocity at any particular moment is changing from moment to moment. And we call that velocity the instantaneous velocity, the velocity at a particular time. And it changes from moment to moment. Let's pick a particular time, call it capital T. Draw a line up. So we're interested, perhaps, in the velocity at this 
point on the graph at time t. How do we get it? Well, what we do is, say, to find the instantaneous velocity, we use the gradient of the tangent. We want to know how steep the line is at this point, how steep the curve is, so we construct the tangent. That's a line just touching. And the steepness of the tangent will be the same as the steepness of the curve at that point where the tangent touches it. And the tangent is a straight line just touching the curve at one point. So this is a key point again. If we've got a curved displacement time graph, to get the instantaneous velocity, the velocity at a particular time, we find the gradient of the tangent at that point. So we draw the tangent, draw the rise run triangle, and then the velocity is delta s over delta t, rise over the run for the gradient of the tangent. So to finish off, here's one for you. What will be the velocity when the time is 10 seconds? Pause the video and work that one out. I hope you've realized when the time is 10 seconds, the gradient of the tangent will be minus 2 over 4. It's a downhill gradient, so it's negative. Minus 2 over 4, minus 0 0.5 meters per second. That's it. I hope that made sense for you. Thank you for watching.